right. Um, my name is Tyler Erickson, if I haven't met you already, and I get to work as a developer advocate here at Google. And one of the things that is really exciting about my job is I get to work with the developers of the tools that you're learning about at Geo for Good, which include things like Earth Engine. And many of those developers are academics working on new discoveries, publishing papers, things like that. Um, so I am pleased to be able to introduce uh, Dr. Jeff Ho to the stage. I met Jeff uh, a number of years ago when he was at Stanford looking at uh, estimating water quality from remote sensing using Earth Engine and other tools. Uh, but what's really, work, uh, really nice about working about certain researchers is that they just don't uh, stop at publishing the papers when they have that new knowledge. They actually work really hard to apply it in the real world. So he's going to be talking about his post-Stanford uh, life with a, a very important uh, company called Cloud Street that's working on development work around the world based on the remote sensing analysis. So please uh, join me in uh, welcoming Jeff to the stage. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you to Google for inviting me to talk today. It's been so um, it's been so such a great week, and hearing all the great work that's being done with all of the amazing Google tools. Um, I'm ecstatic to be able to talk to you today about the work we're doing at Cloud to Street. Uh, uh, as I said, as Tyler introduced me, my name is Jeff Ho. I'm the director of si director of science and product at Cloud to Street. Um, we're an American-based startup. Uh, really, we're focusing on providing uh, remotely sensed flood analytics for um, low middle income countries, um, primarily focusing on users in the government, humanitarian, and insurance spaces. Um, so my keynote today really is to talk to you about how we're revolutionizing, revolutionizing the flood analytics space, really to make, make sure what's being done um, in the halls of academia, the latest and greatest um, being published, really making that uh, accessible and uh, disseminated across a broader uh, audience. Uh, as you may be aware, floods affect actually more people than any other national uh, natural hazard. Um, and with projected climate change, are expected to double or in some cases triple the amount of impact that they receive. Uh, uh, most of this impact happens in low middle income countries and um, by some estimates, 95% of losses um, in the developing world are uninsured. So just think about that for a second. Um, we have these uh, disasters, they're expected to get worse, and sort of the main, one of the main mechanisms we have for um, uh, making sure these disasters don't set back development, um, that's sort of completely inaccessible to a large portion of the impacts. Um, and uh, at Cloud to Street, I think it's, it's been really exciting because it's been one of the few places that I've seen that is really focused on moving um, the latest and greatest of science out of academia and into the field. This is a picture on the left actually is me presenting at Earth Engine Summit in 2015. Um, that's me presenting my work. Uh, it, as, as Tyler said, I, I was at Stanford for a number of years, and it's always amazing to be able to come back and see actually how this particular conference has grown um, commensurately. Um, but I trade a lot of these types of conferences now for the, like the image on the right, where um, now I'm presenting, uh, that's, a, that's a, from a meeting we had in uh, June where I was in Sri Lanka. We have a project there with the Disaster Management Center there. Um, and if you squint really hard on that screen, you can see an Earth Engine uh, browser, and you can see a GUI where we're, um, if you saw my demo last night, um, we have, um, we show people, um, we ask them what is the biggest flood that you remember, and then we map it live using sort of all publicly available sen sensors that are available on Earth Engine. Um, and if I haven't uh, shown that point strong enough, this is really the focus of what we do at Cloud to Street. Um, our mission really is to ensure that all vulnerable communities have the information that they need to prepare for and respond to disasters by reducing the scientific barriers for the necessary information. Um, so we've been around for five, six years now. Um, we've worked in 11 different countries. We have six ongoing projects now. We're working in mostly Africa. Um, we have projects in Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Ghana, Niger, and we, have, we also have some projects in Asia, the project in Sri Lanka, for example. Um, I'm also supposed to say here that we're hiring. We're growing and scaling at a tremendous rate. So if you're a full stack developer, you're a UX designer, you're a senior remote sensing scientist, check out our careers page. Um, yeah. 
Um, and so just to give you a flavor of the types of works and the, and the type of projects that we do, um, here is a project that we did with the World Bank for the Eastern Nile Regional uh, Technical Regional Office, where we mapped all historical floods using Landsat, and then started to identify areas of historical flood frequency um, and areas where there may be a higher flood risk than normal. This is actually um, one of our earlier dashboards. This is a, an Earth Engine app um, that runs in a browser. Um, we also have a, a, a piece of work that's related to ongoing near real-time flood monitoring. So, um, and we're trying to increasingly move mainly from uh, mapping hazards to mapping impacts. So this is a map of a flood that we were working on in Sri Lanka. Um, happened just this year, August 14th, where you can see in blue the hazard map in the city of Ratnapura in the mountains. Um, but also we overlaid that with OSM data, for, uh, road network data. So you can see here this particular part of the city, these roads get washed out during floods. Um, and increasingly, part of our work is training. As you can imagine, um, flood maps from remote sensing aren't really um, really common in, the, in the parts of the world that we work in. And so um, this is this is photo from um, someone on my team, Emelina Glinskis, our remote sensing analyst, doing an earth engine training um, in Ethiopia. And uh, shout out Nick Clinton, I think he's around. He gave us this very, uh, we asked him sort of the last minute for earth engine training materials. Um, and what's been really exciting here is that we're empowering people not only um, explaining to them um, what's available with uh, satellite remote sensing, but um, taking people who had maybe had never coded before, and by the end of the session, they're able to map floods um, sort of near their hometown uh, with Earth Engine, which is really exciting. And so you might be asking, what, do we, what is the sort of technical part of what we do? So the, primarily what we do is we synthesize maps across a variety of different sensors to monitor past and present flooding. So this is just the number of the sensors we use. We obviously use all of the publicly available imagery in the Google Earth Engine catalog. And um, as you understand, there's probably a, there is a trade-off between resolution and then revisit period. Um, but increasingly, as part of the work we do, um, we're starting to leverage our commercial partners a little bit more, so uh, using planet scope imagery, which because of its daily revisit time, it can be critical uh, at the moment of a flood. Um, uh, increasingly, high resolution imagery is necessary for identifying flooding in urban areas, uh, that's SkySat, and we're at the forefront of um, partnering with these uh, new satellite companies where, um, if you're familiar with the Finnish company IceEye, that's um, promising daily one meter radar imagery, that's sort of, we're really excited about that, and so th um, that's sort of the next uh, phase of the flood monitoring analytics work. Um, and really what you can see here is once you start to have all of this, um, this cross-sensor work, you can start to generate time series of flooding. So this is a flood that happened in northern Ghana last year. Um, the Bagre Dam in Burkina Faso spilled over, that all this water coming downstream. And you can map the extent of the flood as it comes downstream. With, so this is just a visualization we did in Earth Engine. Actually, if I had found out about the, the animated GIF sense, uh, session, I could have done this beforehand, but this was done before. <laughs> um, and that was, a, that was a flood that affected tens of thousands of people, uh, thousands of cre uh, hectares of cropland. Um, and really what I'm trying to convey is that because of the tools that are available on Earth Engine, because of the satellites that are available, um, we can start to expand the amount of information that we have to tackle these types of problems. Uh, that was a project we were doing with the World Food Program there um, in Africa risk capacity. Can we go to the next slide, one more? Yeah, um, so I've talked about our work with government and humanitarian work, um, uh, users. Um, what we really think as well that satellites can unlock is um, insurance. Um, so I mentioned at the very beginning of my talk how sort of the global financial tools that we think about as reacting and um, responding to disasters, one of them is insurance. And so we think satellite data can really unlock insurance in two ways. Um, the first is that really expands um, the amount of information available to different parts of the world. So an insurance company might want to uh, provide a policy or something for flooding in a certain country, but if there's no baseline information on risk, no historical information, that they don't have enough information to um, generate that policy. So that's the first way in which satellites, because of their global coverage, can really expand the coverage of certain financial products. 
The second thing is just really exciting is um, really unlocking the power of parametric insurance. So this, is a new, this was a new concept for me, so I'm going to explain it just a sec. Um, you may be familiar with indemnity insurance, which is when, say, your house gets flooded, then yeah, someone comes to your house, uh, a, a, a claims adjuster, identifies the scale of the damage, then you get payment maybe several months later. The idea is that in flooding situations, um, the scale and the scope of the uh, response effort requires money in a sooner, uh, at a quicker rate. And so parametric insurance is a way to tie insurance to a specific trigger or metric that can be measured through satellites. If that parameter gets, um, o o becomes over the threshold, then uh, payouts can be triggered right away. So we think satellites really are the, are the way to do this. And given all the work that's been done with indicators and the SDGs, I think we're starting to move that way. Um, and um, in my remaining time, I just want to leave you with one example to kind of give you a picture of the vision we see that we're trying to make uh, possible a cloud to street. Um, this is a picture on the right of, uh, you may be familiar of a, a cyclone that hit the east coast of Africa this year. Um, uh, I think a cyclone Idai um, really struck the city of Beira, Mozambique very hard, um, really damaged the city to a great extent. Um, what you may not be aware of is basically the same system, the same event occurred in the year 2000. Um, similar atmospheric system and similar damage in the city. And that should help, we should pause and think about that for a second because if for the same system, 20 years apart, what has changed? What, you know, so much has changed in the technology space, so much has changed in the satellite space, and yet we're still facing the same kinds of impacts, same kinds of damage. Um, we were, on the, we were working with partners there, our World Food Program partners, um, we were, uh, who were asking us to map flooding in the city. Um, we uh, obtained through our partners at Planet an 80, meter, 80 centimeter skysat image, and we were able to identify flooding here in the eastern part of the city that had been missed by a lot of the Sentinel-1 sensors. Radar um, can be, uh, detecting water in urban areas can be challenging. Um, and so I wanna just leave you with this idea that for this particular event, what if you know, we had had maps of high-risk areas in the city ahead of time, and what if we could, could have used those maps to move people out of the high-risk floodplain? What if those had been in the medium-risk areas or so? What if they had had, 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 had had access to insurance? What if they had, um, when their homes were destroyed or flooded, you know, they could have had access to insurance to help rebuild their lives sooner? And you know, for response as well, what if first responders had uh, maps of historical floods? What if they knew immediately exactly what, where to go, not rely on sort of reports on the ground and a variety of information at the time? And so at Cloud to Street, we really envision a world in which um, all the great work that's being done by academics and academia really gets disseminated toward a broader audience and really gets um, in the hands of um, the, the people and decision makers that can use that information to really improve on and target the uh, most vulnerable communities in this world. In this world. That's it. Thank you.